out here, raise your hand if you use the always on display. The reason why I like it, it helps me stay focused. <laughs> Information that I would normally have to unlock my phone to access are now visible without me ever having to even touch it. Before always on displays, if I was waiting for an important email or message, every time I heard a notification, I would instinctively grab my phone, unlock it, and four out of five times it would be a notification that didn't require my immediate attention, distracting me from my current task. With the always on display, as a notification comes in, a quick glance allows me to confirm if it's important or not. I've grown quite accustomed to Samsung's always on display having used the Galaxy S9 and Note 9. To my pleasant surprise, Google also offers a similar feature on the Pixel 3 called Ambient Display. Here's a quick rundown of the always on display offerings from both companies. Who does it better? Let's find out. Let's go. Both display the time, date, battery percentage, and notifications. But that's where the similarities end. The Pixel opts to show the current weather forecast, while Samsung doesn't make this available by default. More on this in a bit. When it comes to media, the Pixel does not show any information on what you have playing and requires you to wake the phone to access media controls. Samsung displays media and song information right on the always on display. Music controls, however, are accessible via a face widget. Simply double press on the clock and hit the arrow to show the controls. You can enable different face widgets including today's schedule, next alarm, and it's also here where you're able to enable the weather information I spoke about earlier. When you want to see the lock screen, Google allows you to double tap any part of the display. Whereas double tapping or hard pressing the home button on Samsung devices will wake the phone. When it comes to customization of the always on display, as expected, Samsung just flat out offers more. You can choose to show home button and clock, clock only, home button only. You can toggle auto brightness on or manually adjust it right from the always on display. You can choose to have the always on display show always or based on a schedule. Clock styles and colors are completely customizable. There are loads of pre-installed clock styles to choose from. GoLock 2018's Clock Face app added a whole bunch more. You can even swing by the Samsung theme store to download some more user-created styles if you want to. Want to have your name or a motivational quote displayed? You got it! Want an image displayed? No problem. Want a gift displayed? No problem. Okay, you get the point. Google goes for a much simpler approach and really doesn't allow for any customization of how the ambient display looks. You do have the ability to customize when the always on display activates though. Always on, double tap, or lift. Google has great transitions when moving between the lock screen and always on display. It's not something most people will probably notice but it's definitely a pleasure to the eye. If you're using a Galaxy Note device, you have the option to pin screen right memos that you take right to the always on display. Google has their now playing feature that will automatically detect music playing in your surroundings and display it right on the always on display. Samsung has integration with the Reminders app to show alerts for upcoming reminders as they become relevant. When a new notification comes in, it briefly displays information before minimizing to the default notification icon on the always on display. You can disable this in settings if you're worried about privacy. If using one of Google's live wallpapers, they actually extend to the ambient display, similar to Samsung's Infinity wallpaper. There you have it, a breakdown of the always on display offerings from both Samsung and Google. So who does it better? Both essentially do the job. I love the no pinning and customization capabilities that Samsung brings, but Google's slick animations and now playing features are something I'm really starting to enjoy. If I had to choose, I'd have to give it to Samsung. What's your opinion? Drop your thoughts down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, peace. Bye.